I'm going to be reading in the book of Isaiah, chapter number 9, verse number 6. Isaiah was prophesying here in Isaiah 9 and 6. It should be there. It says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. <laughs> I want to read another verse of Scripture that we can see where this prophecy was being fulfilled in Matthew chapter 1, verses 21 through 25. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. Now as we read scripture, pay attention to every word. Even the pronouns. Even the little ones like but and thee and etc. It's important that you pay attention to every jot and every tittle. Amen. Amen. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel. And God knows us very well, and so he wasn't taking any chances here, so he gave us the interpretation. So it wouldn't have room for us to interpret it the way we wanted it to be. Amen. And so he went ahead and put the interpretation in Scripture, which being interpreted is God with us. Amen. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. <coughs> Very simply today, for however long the Lord will allow me, I'm going to teach and preach on this subject, Jesus. All right. All right. Just Jesus. Amen. What else is there? Amen. I said, what else is there? Amen. We've got to understand that. Word of God is not open for private interpretation. That's why I'm glad that he put that interpretation in there. Too many of us human beings, creations of God, creations of Jesus. We try to put our own mentality and our own thoughts and we mess things up. Right. I don't read in Scripture where it says, Emmanuel being interpreted, the Son of God with us. Right. I don't read in that passage where it is written, Emmanuel being interpreted, God the Son with us. Right. When I read that was inspired of God, he's Emmanuel being interpreted, God with us. He shall send forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law to redeem us that was under the law. And they shall call his name Jesus, and he shall say, not his father's people, his people from their sins. The Bible says he came unto his own, but his own received him not. But as many as would receive him, to them he gave power. to them that believe on his name. On his name. Amen. If you don't believe on his name, it doesn't matter what else you believe the Bible says. Right. Yes. You can believe everything else the book has to say and follow it to your utmost. But if you don't believe that the name of Jesus is the only name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved, you're wasting your time. Let me go on with some attributes that the prophet had some insight with. I like what he said. Jesus is not a God like the Jehovah Witnesses would like for me to believe. Well, that's why they had to write their own Bible. They got to get together in the 
mid 40 so they could kind of convince hundreds of thousands of people that Jesus is just a God. Friend, that's not what Isaiah said. Isaiah said his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God. For you that need a little bit more biblical evidence that Jesus is, in fact, the true living God. Of course he was fully man. Of course he was. But he is and always will be Jehovah. Amen. Yes. Oh, yes, he will be. I don't know about you. Because some of you, I can, just a few of you, I can say that some of you are not really giving ear to this, and, and so I'm just going to be me. And if God bless my wife, and, and she had a baby's boy, and it would have to be a blessing. Right, right. It would have to be a miracle. All right. But miracles can happen. Yes, amen. And, and I named him Noel Anthony White, friend of mine. He wouldn't be me. Right, uh, right. He would have to be a junior. Yes, right. I don't see no Jesus Junior in the book. Putting out anybody here that's yours, <laughs> but you're not your daddy. Amen. All right. All right. But Jesus is the Father. That's right. Yes. The word Jesus is Jehoshua in the Greek, taken from, and you can all read this in the Strong's Dictionary. And Apostolics didn't write the Strong's Dictionary. Okay. <laughs> Taken from the Hebrew word, root word, meaning Yehoshua. Uh -huh. And that means Jehovah saved. Amen. Now breaking that down even further, Jehovah, we know, means Lord. Uh -huh. All right. It is the national Hebrew name of God. All right, yeah. Than Jehovah. Yes. It means self eternal, self existent. All right, all right. Breaking down the word saved, it means to open wide or to free. It means to give safety to others, it means to secure. It means to avenge, defend, deliver, help, preserve, rescue, bring salvation, and the victory. So, the other attributes of the name Jehovah saved is this. He is the God that avenges. He is the God that defends. He is the God that delivers. He is the God. He is the God that preserves. He is the God that rescues. He is the God that brought my salvation. He is the God that's my Savior. And He is my victory. Amen. That's all in the name of Jesus. Amen. So I don't understand. You've come a little too late for me All right. to tell me that Christendom, they'll do everything else but what Jesus himself commanded to be done in Matthew 28. Right. They will not baptize yes. in the name of Jesus. All right. You say, well, it really doesn't matter. I beg to differ with you. It does. Yes, amen. It makes a big difference. That's right. 
And that is the separation between the church of the living God right. and a religious organization. Yes. Let's look about that name. Let's just, let's just read what the Bible says, okay? Come on, evangelist. Because we're going to run through this as quick as I feel led of the Holy Ghost. We're going to start with John 5 and 43. Listen to what Jesus in His humanity said to those around Him. This is what the Lord said. I am come in my Father's name. What? I am come in my Father's name. In other words, when they named Him Jesus, Emmanuel, that was His Father's name. Right. And He said to all those that were listening, I have come in my Father's name. Yes. This was spoken in His humanity. Amen. Bring up the next verse. I have manifested thy name. I have made apparently clear. Yes. I have made pointedly clear. Yes. I have manifested thy name. Thy name unto men. Which thou gavest me out of the world. Let's bring up the next scripture. While I was with them in While the world. While I was with them in the world. I kept them in thy name. What? I kept them in thy I name. I wasn't preaching another name. I, I didn't come and, and try to do another gospel. I didn't try to sway them to believe something else. Not only did I come in thy name, I manifested thy name. And rest assured, I kept them in thy name. Yes. Why is it, Christian, I'm keeping in the name? All right. How can you call yourself a Christian and be genuine if you don't do everything in the name of Jesus? Amen. 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 I feel a little kicked back, but I'm used to that. Preaching still go forth. Amen. Ephesians 3, 14 and 15 says something very powerful. For this cause, I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh -huh, because of His name was manifested. I'm going to bow down before God. Why am I bowing down before God? Read. Of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So I can say I'm Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. Amen. I can say I'm a, I'm a Jesus' name. Amen. Now, you may say free, but that's okay with me. Right, amen. Right. Everything about me is Jesus. Yes. Everything about me is Jesus. Everything. And yes, I believe in the manifestation, not as a person, but in an office. I believe the Father, the Son, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. But they're only one person. It's only one name. And that name is Jesus. Now... For those of you that need a little bit more understanding intellectually, look up the word name in the Strong's Dictionary. It's a dictionary. Look it up. And you'll find the word name nowhere when it's describing Jesus. That matter of fact, Father, Son, or Holy Ghost. Is the name ever plural? It's always singular. Amen. That tells me there's only one name. Amen. Now, I don't know. It's been a long time since I've been in school. Some of you teachers here, you correct me, but if there's no S after names, I'm looking for just one name. Amen. Is that right? Just one name. I'm not looking for many names. Now, there may be many adjectives, wonderful, counselor, but there's only one name. If there was an S there, that'd be a different story. But there's only one name. Yes. Because there's no S. But that name in the Greek means authority and character. Yes. And it also means surname. All right. All right. Anybody here, you need me to break down what surname is? When you were born into your family, the last name that they gave you was your family name. Yes. It's a surname. It's a family name. Some of you are quiet, but let me tell you, that is the truth. Yes. So if I go back very quickly and read this and what it means. I have come in my father's surname, and you receive me not. If another come in his own surname, him you will receive. John 17, I have manifest, made apparent your surname unto man. 
It says in John 17 and 12, when I was in the world, I kept them in thy surname, thy family name. Ephesians says, for this cause, I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom all the family in the surname is named. All right. Matthew 28. I'm not afraid of Matthew 28. Right, right. It's in the book. Right, right. I don't need somebody to tell me, well, we think it wasn't in there. It doesn't matter to me. It doesn't take away from any truth. Right. So it's okay with me. I'm not afraid of it. I know what it means. I know what it means in English. I know what it means in mathematics. I have no problem. I understand it perfectly. Even if I didn't have the evidence of Peter, Philip, and Paul... I, I still understand what it means. All right. I'm going to break it down for you, okay? Matthew 28. We're going to begin reading in verse number 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Right. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them. Let me tell you what the Greek means here on baptizing. It means to immerse. Yes, right. amen. It means to submerge. Yes. It means to be soaked. Yes. It means to be fully wet. Yes. That means if you didn't get your whole body under the water in the right name, friend, you haven't been baptized correctly. Yes. If the name wasn't called over you, you haven't been baptized correctly. Yes. You've got to be born of the water. Just like you've got to come out of your mother's womb. There's got to be amniotic fluid broken. And there's got to be spiritual water broken. You've got to be birthed in spiritual baptism. And when you come out, the daddy, the daddy is going to give you his surname. And that surname is Jesus. There's Jesus all over me. I said there's Jesus in me. Hallelujah. My birth certificate, the last name on my birth certificate is Jesus. Baptizing them in the name, the authority, the character, the surname, the family name of the Father. Now, as you look here very carefully, I hope it's up there. I don't want you to think that I'm adding anything or taking away. I don't see an S, do you? No. no. I see a preparation. Pepper, somebody help me say preposition. Thank you, and a pronoun. I don't see name father there, do you? No. I see name of the Father yes. and of the Son yes. and of the Holy Ghost. Yes. Now, for you people that want to study our English language and you want to understand what this particular phrase is, it's an elliptical clause. Don't take my word for it. Go look it up. That's what this is. It is in literature an elliptical clause. They have one thing in common with the three things after that. So if I know any of the one, if I know what the name of the Father is, if I know what the name of the Son is, if I know what the name of the Holy Ghost is, by my own English, by my own definition of English, there have to be the same as the other two. I don't care what you think. You shouldn't care what I think. The book is the book. Yes. Baptized in the authority and the character and the surname of the Father. Well, we already read Isaiah told us that Jesus is the everlasting Father. But most of Christendom knows that the name of the Son, because we read it in Matthew 1, thou shalt call his name Jesus. Amen. So I've been given that. But I also know by Isaiah that Jesus has to be the name of the Father too. Right. So now I'm doing pretty good. So it takes just simple deduction in literature application to understand the name of the Holy Ghost is Jesus too. Because there's only one person described there. They hold many offices. Okay, some of you, that's still not enough for you. All some right. of you have mathematical minds. Let's do a little algebra here if we could. Could we? Okay, algebra problem. You ready, Brother Love? Okay, we got N. Now, we N is singular. So let's just use that as N. So we need to find out what N means, okay? And I'm going to try to take my time and not lose anybody. 
in. Can you see in? Can you see in? And the equals, okay, we're looking for Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. We're looking for their names. So we're going to use this mathematical problem. For some of you that don't like the, little, uh, the literature definition, we're going to use math here. So N equals F, because I'm looking for Father, right? All right. N equals S, is that right? Yeah. N equals HG, is that right? Yeah. So if I can plug in the bank, blank, of what N equals in any of them, they got to be equal to the other. That's simple mathematics. So everybody in Christian will know, almost everybody in the United States know that Jesus is the name of the Son. So N equals J. So if N equals J, we know N equals J for F as well, and N equals J for HG as well. In fact, the name has to be Jesus. So on the day of Pentecost, yeah. uh -huh. Uh -huh. All right. yeah. hey, Peter was right there listening to the Lord when he gave this command. And evidently, he understood it was an elliptical call. I don't know that. <laughs> but evidently, he understood what the Lord meant. Because on the day of Pentecost, When he got to preach it. And it pricked 3,000 of the multitude's heart. And they came to Peter and said, if you don't want to believe me, believe Peter. Right. Oh, Peter got going, man. He got going. And, and, and all of a sudden they said, Men and brethren, what shall we do? And Peter stood up in Jerusalem. And he said, Repent and be baptized. some southern dialect going on to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth whom ye crucified whom God raised from the dead even by him did this man stand here behold before you hold this is the stone which was set in all of you builders which has become the head of the corner neither neither is there salvation in any other for there's no other name under heaven Given among men, whereby we must be saved. Must be saved. So, in Mark 10, there's a story of a blind man. And so let's let's ask, let's ask Bartimaeus. Let's ask and see what he says. Okay? Let's see what Bartimaeus says about the name Jesus, can we? Let's see what happens. I mean, let's just see what happens. Okay, let's read. And they came to Jericho. They came to Jericho. And as he went out of Jericho with uh -huh. his disciples right. and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus. A great number of people. But there was only one that knew the name. Great multitude of Christendom, but only a few know the name. All right. Oh. Yes. This man was blind. Right. He saw better than those that had good eyes. You need to get blind again to yourself, your thoughts, your arrogance, your pious attitudes, and start looking at what the Word of God says. Oh yeah, I've been called to preach, and preach can be abrasive, but you need to receive it with meekness, and let it be interacted inside of you. Blind Bartimaeus. Blind Bartimaeus sitting by the roadside begging. Yes. Amen. Son of Timaeus. Sat by the highway side begging. Come on. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth. He didn't see. He didn't see. He didn't even know what he looked like. You know something? I don't really know what he looks like. Right. right. But I know the name. Uh -huh. so I can be blind. I can be hurt. I can be bound. I can be depressed. Come on. I, I can be looking for salvation. I can be looking for answers. I, I need somebody to help me. I, I'm blind. I don't know what to do. Don't know where to go. Don't know how to get out of this mess. But oh, I've heard. I've heard about a Savior. Oh, no, no story. How a Savior came from glory. I know writers had it down, honey. They had it down. I've heard an old, old story. 
how the Savior came for glory. Or a man may have wrote it. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, what did this man do? He began to cry out and no, say, No, he didn't. No, he didn't. <laughs> it was a multitude. <laughs> this man was blind. And he cried out. What did he cry? Jesus. Jesus! Thou son of David. There's power in that name. Yeah. Oh, there's deliverance in that name. There's defending in that name. There's helping in that name. There's preserving in that name. There's healing in that name. Jesus, thou son of David. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Then he charged him that he should shut up. But he cried the more. He said, I'm you. not shutting up. I know the name. I've been hearing what this man could do. And I'm desperate. I'm desperate. I've been sitting here too long. You've been sitting here too long. And Jesus has been walking by. And all you got to do is say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Continue to read them. I'm feeling it. <laughs> and Jesus stood still. You didn't catch it, did you? Come on. Jesus moving over here blessing somebody. You think, well, not me, because you're not calling his name. Yes. All right. All right. All right. Jesus was walking. And he heard his name. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Somebody knows my father's name. Yes. Because I'm not a Jew. And he commanded him to be called, and they called the blind man. Saying unto him, be of good comfort, rise, he calleth thee. That's why some of you got to get out of those pews. Yeah. The Lord He's calling you. Yeah. If you keep sitting there, you ain't getting nothing that you really need. Yeah. You might get a little doodad, you might get a little blessing, but that's not what God wants to do. He wants yeah. to do some mighty things in your life. He wants to remove some past hurts and pains in your life. He wants to get you to a place. Yeah, he does. Yes, he does. He wants to get you to a place that you can be happy. Oh, yeah. And he's casting away his garment. The only thing that he owns. Some of you uh, have got too many possessions. You're afraid to live for God because some of them you've got to give up. But well, evidently, you don't really want him. Evidently, you are all right, but you think you are. But he cast away his very thing, his only thing that he had. And he cast it away. He was blind. How could he find it? And hide it in the closet. Right. And he, casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. You hear what Bartimaeus had to say? What else did he say? And Jesus answered and said unto him, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? That's all he's waiting for you. You need to tell him what you want. Right, right, oh, yes. The young man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. That I might believe him. He didn't come up there and say, God, I command you give me sight. He said, I might be able to see him. What does what the Lord do? And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way. Thy faith hath made thee whole. You know, he didn't, lay, hey, he didn't even lay hands on him. But let me go to Paul. Let me go to Paul. It came to pass in Acts 16. As we went to prayer, certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High, which show us the way of salvation. And this did she many days, but Paul being grieved, huh, being grieved, hello, yeah. he said, I had enough of this devil, yeah. not the woman, yeah. right. I had enough of this devil. Turn. And he turned and said to the spirit, I command thee. What? I command thee in the name. He didn't say pretty please. Right. No. Right. Right. He didn't say would you kindly. I command thee. He said I command thee in, in the name of Jesus. Not his name. Christ. No. Not his name. Right. Not, not titles, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Right. No. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, the authority and character, the yeah. certainty. The Father's name, Jehovah's saying, I command thee in the name of Jesus to come out of her. Yes. And it came out the same hour. You can 
stand. Praise God. Some of you need, you need somebody or yourself to come up here and you need to call on the name of Jesus and you need some deliverance in your mind of your past life. All right. And keep going back. Keep going back. Keep going back. Some of you need healing of your heart. Some of you, I'm telling you, some of you have done some things you're so ashamed of. You need to come and invoke the name of Jesus for forgiveness. Some of you need to come for strength. Some of you need to come for renewing. Some of you need to come for salvation. And all you got to do to be saved is repent. We'll baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ. And you can be filled with the Holy Ghost with evidence and speaking of another tongue. So if you have not been baptized in Jesus' name, come to this altar. Repent of your sins. Tell somebody you want to be baptized. The water is ready. We got gowns for you to change into. And I'll baptize you, submerge you, get you so fully wet in the name of Jesus.